our body a little bit better. So this is the design from the uh, last lesson. All I did was in between lessons just took out the things that I didn't like, which were sort of the the little hanging pieces on the on the armor and stuff like that, and just the shape of the mouth here just wasn't where I wanted it to be. Instead of making you guys, you know, look at me do that, which is again. Uh, something that I've already showed how to do in those two lessons with the face extensively, I felt like it was better to just bring it in here and then add some more design elements to our creature in order to flesh this out a little bit more. So I made this uh, pretty long. I'm going to shorten it a little bit here. Just make the head a little bit smaller. And now what I'm looking to do is add the teeth. Now, the teeth are going to be pretty important because, at least for me, uh, it's really going to define the character and it's going to help us uh, get something looking a lot more interesting than what we have right now because it's a little bit disjointed uh, I feel I feel like the body doesn't really match uh, to the head and, and that could be fixed in uh, a few ways so something like changing the neck here is going to be important but we're going to have to do plenty more in order to make it fit in my opinion so let's add those teeth in how do I add teeth? Well, I would append a sphere. So like this. The sphere is somewhere in there. There you go. It's in, hidden in there. We're going to go ahead and just dynamesh it into super low res. So like 8. Dynamesh it. And let's bring it out. Okay. Now, uh, we can scale this down pretty quickly here with the transpose tools. And that's what we're going to do. So just going to keep doing that. Sometimes when you zoom in, it goes a little bit faster. Not really sure why but uh, it does work. And what I would like to do is probably add some teeth right here. So let's go ahead and do that. Get your sphere into position. And similar to how I showed you how to do the tail there, it's a fairly simple process of just pulling it down, right? As you can see, I'm gonna attach it there. And if you want to make a really sharp tip, just come in here and pull that tip out and then smooth everything but that. You can see you can make something really sharp really quick. Now, if you go through it, it's going to go down and it's going to uh, sort of disappear. But you can definitely sort of smooth everything leading up to it and get a cool sort of fang effect. Now, uh, as you can imagine and probably see, this adds a lot to our model. So I think it's an important piece of design that we should add. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go into my Z plugin menu. You probably can't see it, but it's right here on the top right. Z plugin and then a sub tool master. I'm going to do mirror. Okay. Now the thing is, this is a dynamesh. So that means that we can actually use a transpose line, hold control and drag to duplicate it, which is pretty dandy. Now, what we're going to do is move this using the move tool itself just to sort of shrink that into position and then move it up slightly. And then we can re-sculpt this as necessary, uh, sort of move it outside. I'm going to turn symmetry on and just rotate both of these outward like this so we can see what we're doing. So something like this, okay. And then we can duplicate that as well. And I'm going to rotate that, duplicate this again with the move selected. That's how I'm duplicating. I move that outward like so. And then I think if I just stick this very close here, I can do one more and uh, I will be pretty satisfied with how that looks. Now, those are the top teeth. We obviously want to add some to the bottom. I want to do some tests here and you can see that I can't really move these teeth, right? Well, there's a mask here, and there's always a mask when you duplicate. So if you can't see it, just try to unmask, and then there you go. You can see we can move now. But I'm going to make these teeth round like this. And I definitely like where this is going. Might thicken these up a little bit, though. Not looking so much like fangs that can maybe curve them inward like this. Yeah, there we go. I think this is what they're missing. A little bit of movement. Pull down the tip like so. 
and now we can actually you know start thinking about uh, bringing all of these together so actually making you know a little bit of a of a space on the face for the teeth to be covered in. and that's gonna make a big difference as well so as you can see now you could technically add some teeth to the front here uh, if you want uh, but in my mind they would be hidden uh, in this way so what we can do here now is uh, possibly just duplicate these instead of doing it with the DynaMesh uh, although that is an option you can just duplicate it on the subtool as well and then just grab one down here and try to rotate it so you sort of flip it on itself hopefully so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna try to flip it this way you see how it sort of snaps at some point like this there you go. So the biggest thing here is if we move these like so, they might stick together. Okay, they didn't this time. Sometimes transpose uh, stick uh, sticks things together. And it kind of it's kind of bad. So there we go. Now I like this idea, the teeth sort of coming outward like that. That looks pretty cool to me. And now you can see how super quickly, just by playing around with something very simple like you know adding teeth we can get something really cool looking uh, and that's definitely where I'm going with this guy uh, I really like this I don't want the teeth to intersect so I'm gonna move them outward like this and uh, anything that I can sort of tweak to make these sort of function together I will do so lower these a little bit here and again I've already showed you the little trick you can just make the, the teeth look a little bit more interesting. I'm going to do this here. Now, I want us to look at this and be objective about it and see, okay, is there a practical application? And I think so. If he lowers his head, this, these fangs can be used to sort of rip things apart. Uh, you know, in an upward motion, and I think that's important. Remember that uh, everything in our model has to make sense, it has to exist for a reason. So I do want to make sure that that looks fairly stable. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just move these teeth outward a little bit, like so. I try not to alter it too much. Just remember, you can always switch subtools, and if you think, you know, oh, I could probably, you know, do to move that that one big tooth right there, you can just come in here and mask it delicately. Hopefully, I'm not able to do it right now, but let's try. Yeah, you know, without grabbing that teeth there, you can just move it down a little bit. And then you give her, you give yourself some space for the other teeth, which is exactly what we want. So we'll do that, and then we'll just make that teeth go in there. And then, as far as these goes, I can just thin them out a little bit from over here. There we go. Give them more interesting-looking shape. You know, like they're all radiating outward like this, instead of being straight like so. And that'll give you a cool look. And I can also invert that mask and then do the other thing the other way around like this. There you go. Invert that mask if I want and then, yeah. Just want to be careful to oops, have that uh, look fairly, fairly decent. And then we can uh, adjust our sculpt to it as required. I think you guys will agree it is pretty cool so something like that yeah so this looks very menacing very cool I am liking it a lot so let's go ahead and uh, stop it here and uh, in the next lesson I want to work on the wings and then uh, we'll start making good progress we're getting ready to start really refining and finishing this thing but you know we did the wings early on and uh, I want to I want to keep them as a, as a design element but they weren't looking that good. They were just really sketched out, and you know, there's plenty of things that we can do to refine it. 
but how do we go about adding those wings? So it's going to be a little bit of a two-step process. Um, if you don't want to do wings on your creature, then that's totally fine. Uh, you could just remove these here uh, and, uh, you know, flatten that out, and, and that'll be that. If you do want to add wings, um, you have to start thinking about the actual way that wings work. So you do need sort of bones for the wings to work. So very crudely, I'm going to just uh, pull out here just so you can see. So you'd have uh, to the end of the wing right here. Right, This is how big the wing is. You would need a finger. Let me just see if I can mask that off. So you would need a finger, let's say, going that way. And then you would need, from this area here, a few other fingers radiating from that. So let me dynamesh this thing and, and see if I can get it to look decent. So there you go. Zebrush did a little bit of a, <laughs> of a skip there, but uh, yeah. Let's hope everything is fine. So, you can do something like this and then add that secondary finger like that. And then I would most likely add just one more right there. And that's sort of what you need to do to at least have a believable wing. And all of these can come up here and sort of attach to themselves. Uh, Sort of, you have, you, I guess the best way to imagine it is if this is a hand. So you, you'd have a little bit of a, of a thumb here, and then you'd have your fingers. So that's basically how wings work, uh, and uh, you sort of have to create that in order for you to have something interesting. So I'm going to dynamesh that as well, uh, and then I'm going to start inflating it and uh, playing around with it. So there we go. So ZBrush didn't freak out on me this time. Again, uh, this happened here because we have a very thin surface, so we're going to fix that anyway, so it's fine. So just inflate this, make sure it's thick enough, okay? And that means going all over the model, okay? Mind you, these have to be thin, but to a point, okay? Don't uh, overdo it on the thinness either. So we can dynamish this now, and it's probably going to look pretty... Pretty janky, but uh, we'll wait. And you, as you can see, ZBrush is having a little bit of a tougher time since there's a whole bunch of inflated uh, things that I did. There was a lot of holes that I has to close. And if this starts to happen, then you really have a problem, which means we should go back a couple steps. And that means that ZBrush could not cope with our inflated uh, fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try this again, but I undid it a few steps. And before we got that problem, I'm going to go ahead and sort of try this here. You can see this is the main issue that we're getting. It's a little bit weird looking. It's almost as if it's two polygroups for some reason, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try to... I guess somehow it got really weird looking. Let's go ahead and just dynamize this now. And I think that's going to be okay. There we go. Okay, so, crisis averted. Let's just hope that doesn't happen again. I'm really not sure exactly what happened there, but I guess we have a secondary polygroup here, and uh, for some reason. So what I want to do is I want to just go ahead and do, let's go ahead and go to the polygroups. Where are you? And then uh, group visible. There we go. So we have one group now, and uh, we can definitely try to redynamesh things if we have to. Uh, on another solution is to uh, up the resolution of your dynamesh. That usually fixes these kinds of issues, but as you can see, a little bit of a back and forth, and, and we got it fixed. So it's not really a problem. And I think it's important for you guys to see, if you do run into something like this, how you should fix it. You know, just don't, don't give up on it. Don't redo it quite yet. There is hope for it yet. So, wings. They look good. Great. Now what do we do? Well, few choices. You can use the move tool and sort of start to try to arc them this way, which I think is cool. Uh, should be careful with the longer tendrils, though. Try to bring them from the tip, like so. And try to remember, if, if they're all fingers, they should sort of deform that way. So have a little bit of a breaking point 
on the mesh. So we can do something like this, or you can keep it straight. It's completely up to you. And then uh, what I like to do is to append. You can append a cube if you like, uh, or you can do something cool, which uh, also works, which is just coming in here with the uh, curve quad fill brush. And then you can just sort of add the wings any way that you want. So something like this, pretty simple to do. Obviously, I would uh, have to do it in symmetry and uh, and just make sure that I get two lines instead of one, like there, you see. So now I get two, uh, and I'll, I'd have to make sure that they don't connect. But this is a pretty easy way of getting the wings together that way. Uh, but if you like, you can also, if you don't want to play around with the curves, you can also come in here with the, I wouldn't recommend using a plane, probably use a cube, just bring a cube, dynamesh it in to like 8 resolution as well, and just move it, just bash the hell out of it, like so, and then you can just mirror it later, so just do something like this, and it's fine, and then just uh, stretch it all the way out, make it really big, like this, like this, as you can see, it's pretty simple to get something here to fill our wings with. Now, uh, remember that uh, when talking about wings, generally speaking, you're going to see the fingers. So in the areas where the fingers are, you should probably smooth out the wings or something like that so it, it does show up. And uh, But yeah, in general... This here should more than cover your bases on things that you need to do. So something like that. Just looking at it here. And since I already moved the fingers of the of the of the wing here, it gets a little bit trickier to add everything. But once you do, you can see I can probably dynamesh this now and uh, you know maybe cut in here with the Damien standard brush. And then uh really easy to get that to look right so there you go that's a pretty quick way right a few minutes uh, to add wings to your creature should you choose to use them in your design now uh, I don't know if I will keep them in mind I think I will pretty pretty confident that I will and in fact I'm probably going to add a secondary finger over here so something like uh, and I'll do this uh, during uh, in between lessons what I'll go ahead and do I'll just tell you now so you have an idea I'm gonna make these uh, I'm gonna mask this because really it's not liking me playing with it too much I'm gonna mask the body here I'm gonna make these uh, fairly small if possible and I'm gonna add an extra tendril coming out from there so that I can actually make some sort of a connection all the way down to the body with the wing. I think that's going to look really cool. So I'll go ahead and pull out another finger on the bottom there and I'll just terminate it wherever really. I'm just going to leave it sort of uh, hanging. So something like let's say let's use a mask here. Let's use my uh, mask pen keep using my mask lasso but let's use the mask pen let's invert that mask and then you can grab something like the where's your snake hook brush there you go and you can just pull out uh, a finger sort of just going in that direction like that and then you'll be able to sort of ground this wing uh, onto the body sort of like it has a a good support to it and I think that's going to be fairly interesting to do and use so I would do something like this redynamesh it and then uh, play around with the shape so I'm gonna do that and uh, if I don't want to keep the wings I'll just delete them like I showed you guys but I wanted to uh, basically explain to you if you want to go for wings this is how you do it whether I'll keep them or not I don't know quite yet but uh, is how to do it that's why I made the last lesson in case you did want to uh, just because uh, I felt like the way the design was going, it, he was feeling a lot more grounded than flying, I felt. Uh, so I just didn't think it was fitting his design so well, but I found a cool, interesting idea, which is to 
have some sort of a little crevice in here. Uh, and the idea I had behind this was, what if, uh, say, he has his little cubs or whatever, and uh, let's say that this is a, uh, a female uh, of the species. Let's say that she keeps the cubs right here. You know, they have protection from the elements, sort of, uh, from the sides and, and stuff like that. And they can sort of rest here. Uh, and that could be interesting, you know. Maybe, maybe we're thinking she doesn't have that many cubs, maybe one or two. And they can fit in there while she moves them around and stuff. Uh, and they have some sort of protection, which I felt looked like a pretty cool idea. So... Again, having a reason for something, uh, that's why I sort of stuck with it. Instead of just removing it, I still think this looks pretty cool. And I think we're going to be able to do a lot to, with it uh, when it comes to connecting it to the body and things like that in the uh, coming lessons that we're going to play around with very soon. So uh, here's the thing. Oh, our feet are a little bit of a mess. And, uh, you know, that's something that I said we were going to work on later. And uh, that time is now. So what do we do? Well, um, I think that it's time to consider inflating these together, okay? And uh, sort of giving ourselves a little bit of an overhaul here on the feet themselves. So let's go ahead and push everything back a little bit more, make them a little bit smaller, okay? And what we're going to do is I'm going to go for the feline feet as well as reference. It doesn't mean they're going to be exactly like that. But I think that if we can create this without too much trouble, it'll be better for us in the long run. So something like this is what I'm going for. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to smooth all this out. So oh, something like that. Really not sure how that happened there, but uh, we'll just forget about it for now. And uh, we can smooth this out. and just keep working on it. So I think this is going to fit a little bit better now that we've gone uh, than we otherwise would have. I didn't want to keep this too far from something that we can, uh, you know, say, oh, you know, it's sort of like a, a lion or a tiger or something like that. I think this is an interesting uh, design and it's still close to home while still being fairly different, which I like. So that's what we're going for right now. And just adjusting it here will help us out. So I think this can still be a little bit smaller, okay? And uh, we can probably make it shorter too. So there, there are a few things that we could do here. For example, we could come underneath here and just flatten a little bit of this out. Just so we have, you know, something interesting to look at and I sort of like what is forming here sort of like um, some nail like toes like this kinda like where that's going from the side if you know what I mean one of the things that I did want to stress as well is that while we are definitely going to try to refine this as much as possible we're doing this in a pretty short amount of time like I said, the idea is we have a deadline, we have to show something, we've tried some ideas, we've played around with it, uh, we have to get this thing done. Uh, that doesn't mean perfect uh, by any means. In fact, uh, that would be another person's job. Your job is to think of something and flesh out the idea enough that it can be approved. And if it is approved, then it goes back to the drawing board most likely and uh, gets used, but uh, with a lot of changes most likely so don't worry about finishing it worry about having one angle that's gonna look really good that's gonna sell it and that's uh, exactly what we're doing right now so if this works from far then we're good and that's exactly what I want so uh, don't worry about it for now I think the overarching lessons in this course are much more important than learning how to finish your sculpt there are plenty of tutorials here on digital tutors that'll help you uh, finish it out and you know really refine it show you the process you know what do you do after you get to this point I've done one myself for the elephant like I've mentioned before uh, I think it's really really much more interesting to just see okay how far do I take it what's enough and this is enough this is how far we take it so those are our toes and I'm gonna echo those to the front okay 
So there you go. You can see that the combination of trim dynamic and clay plus move is really powerful. And uh, as you can see, the, the front paws there, they look terrible. <laughs> but we'll fix those in a second here. Again, if you're not going to look at it from the front, you don't need to be this nitpicky, but uh, I'm not sure what angle we're going to see this from. And depending on the angle, we'll go back and, and continue refining. But for now, this is okay. I may enlarge this slightly, okay? But for now, I think we can push this towards the back. Have a good... Yeah, this looks pretty decent. Okay, so front looks horrific. Let's get rid of it. Let's inflate it. That's how we did it uh, on the back there. If you recall, we can dynamesh this now. And that'll in turn also uh, help us out in the back there. I'm going to do the same thing here. Just going to go underneath and uh, flatten. As you can see, I'm already sort of getting what I want here. So I don't have to worry about too much. Just enough. Remember, just enough. You're being effective, not perfectionist. A lot of times, uh, a job like this, you have to be very mindful of the time that you're spending on each piece because it might not be the core. You know, maybe what you're going to do is just sort of give uh, this sort of a render here, and you're not even going to show the feet properly. You're just going to put some mood lighting in there, some really quick textures, and then just uh, figure it out. Uh, and you you know you spent an hour on the hands and why would you spend an hour in the hands right so for me right now you know we'll spend about three hours or so close to that to create this creature and that's enough time that is enough time for us to sketch something out and still flesh it out uh, all things considered so remember be mindful of what you're trying to do uh, since this is a designing tutorial, we're just working our best to make sure that all the forms read properly. So there we go. And you can see we still sort of used a little bit of what we did from way, way in the start. But I did say that we would come back to it. So we'll just keep refining. And then there we go. All right, so the thumb is the only thing that's a little bit worrying to me. So I'll go ahead and just curve it down like this. Inflate it nicely. Just do it like that. And then we can say, okay, look, there's some connections there. This is like a, a, a very hard shell that protects whatever is underneath, so another design element, so another, uh, you know, this is his main weapon, so he swipes and bites, I guess, just like a regular lion would, uh, so you would, you would expect him to have some protection. So, you know, maybe the mark of an old, you know, whatever it is that we call this thing, is that his uh, nails are no longer so protected, and they are, you know, they're not so sharp, so it makes it difficult for it to hunt, and thus it becomes obsolete slowly as time goes by. Things like that. It's cool to think about interesting stories like that to create your creatures from. So, okay. Something like this. I'm really not trying to be perfect, but again, I also don't want to completely dismiss it, you know, outright. But I think this is a pretty decent place to stop it. I think we have uh, what we came for as far as the, the feet goes. They, they function well enough, I think. And uh, we can work on them some more when we refine the whole body, which is what we're going to do. And something that I want to keep fairly simple. But I do want to add something to it. Uh, anything really that uh, is going to be added onto our model has to make sense. So. A lot of what he has in here uh, looks fine, and uh, I like where it's going, but the tail is fairly mundane, let's just say. And what I would like to do 
is possibly add sort of like a little bit of sharpness down here. Now I'm doing a trim dynamic pass here. And basically this is to say we can have uh, some sort of a defensive mechanism here on the tail itself. So let's say that the weapons are uh, mainly going to be the claws and the, the head and the, and the teeth and things like that. And we'll definitely go ahead and refine the face a lot more, you know. I have a really good idea of what I want. We have to add the eyes and things like that. So there's plenty of sculpting to be done still. But I would like the tail at least to feel very powerful. And to do that, I think the best thing to do is just thicken it up quite a bit. And if we can do that, I think that we may reach a good uh, point here where it might make sense for it to use it, you know, as a last resort, just a really thick tail. You know, what, why else would you have it? Well, you have really big and strong muscles that you can, you can hit with it. But you can also say that just like the protrusion that, uh, you know, our animal has on its back to, say, protect its cubs, like I said, everything we do in there for a reason, we can possibly possibly add either some sort of shell uh, effect like this which I think uh, may also be functional uh, in a way or we could add something like uh, spikes on the side which I think would be uh, pretty cool I, I don't know that that is exactly what I want because if it is a a sort of feline based then you know if you have cats or know anybody who has cats they'll tell you that uh, cats tend to sort of curl up into a little ball with their tail and it wouldn't really work if there are spikes on the side of the tail so while it would be cool looking it's a little bit excessive that's why you probably you know don't see that much of it in mother nature so I think these shells here work and as far as a uh, a defensive mechanism you know she can always just use this to protect herself in some fashion which is a cool idea we'll leave the tip fairly vulnerable but the rest of the body I think a body of the tail I mean is interesting to just sort of sharpen like this so something like that and then we can do some cool things in Photoshop uh, afterwards to get a cool texture uh, looking thing over here. So uh, we'll go ahead and play around with this a little bit more later but I definitely wanted to just come in here and add this little bit of interest to our model. So something like this and then for the tip here we can just do a little bit of a, a little bit of a longer shell like so which looks cool and I think that actually really works and uh, yeah I'm really happy with that so there's always gonna be weak points right so underneath of the tail sounds like a weak point things like that and uh, yeah I think I think we'll leave it at that and then uh, we'll move on to overall body refinements right now so let's just lay it out here uh, fairly consistently so what we're gonna do now is refine the body okay so there's gonna be a lot of anatomy to refine which is just blocked in stuff that it's like we have to come in here on the knees and and add some more volume here you know you just gotta make everything look a lot better a lot more interesting than it is right now so we do that okay and then what we do uh, so for example this here is a problem area that I really need to figure out what I'm gonna do now that I change the hands I can totally do something about it but Right now it's still uh, not quite there yet. So we'll do this, we'll refine the body, and then we'll work on refining and adding details to the face. We'll probably spend a couple of lessons working on that. Then we can move on to detailing, painting, and rendering. So we'll be done uh, in say five or six lessons at most, I think. Which I think we'll be able to flesh this out quite well. But anyway, while we are here, let's just uh, 
see what we can do about this forearm here that is troubling us so much. Just adding some tendons here to look good. We also may want to think of a pose. Maybe something like a walking pose, so we may save a lesson for that as well. So you yeah, the underneath of my nails here, not looking good at all. Let's just trim this down. And there will be plenty of things to do soon enough. So, okay, let's uh, stop it here. One thing that you could do if you're uh, thinking about uh, working on the feet and having a little bit of trouble grounding everything, just use a clip curve and just clip everything so you sort of get everything on the same level. You're going to ruin a little bit of the work you did on the nails, but you can fix that later. But it's a really quick way of just leveling whatever is touching the ground and making sure that your model is, if you turn perspective off, on the ground plane properly. Okay, so there's a tip. I'm going to leave this alone for now, and uh, we'll go ahead and in the next lesson refine